guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the makeup in my collection that I would deem difficult. We're gonna do a full face of difficult makeup that's difficult for various reasons. And I'm gonna decide once and for all whether I'm keeping or decluttering each of these items. I thought it would be a fun way to do a mini declutter. I just wanna say up front, I'm not a big fan of disclaimers, but in some cases they are difficult because of the shade and I wanna say that that is entirely subjective. So if I use a blush that I say is too saturated, for me, I mean it's too saturated for me, it's not necessarily a flaw in the product. So I'm decluttering certain things because they don't work for me necessarily, but I love giving them to friends that are going to actually get use out of them. So I'm not necessarily saying that if I'm decluttering it, it's a bad product. So anyway, I'm going to move you guys in. I have no makeup on my face here and we've got literally a full face, actually more than a full face. So I'm going to talk through some of them without putting them on and then we will put most of them on. So let's go ahead and jump in. I pulled out some insurance today. I have a couple of my back me out of trouble products sitting in front of me too, in case we really get ourselves in deep. But there is a chance that this is going to be a very ugly face of makeup just by design. So First of all, I would say that I've gotten rid of most of the foundations in my life that I would deem as difficult. <laughs> I don't like to keep things around like that that I just know I'm never gonna reach for, but this is probably the one that has remained in my collection that is the most difficult, but I wanted to try it today. This is the Rare Beauty, hmm foundation. I don't know if it has a name. I have it in the shade 130N. I wanted to try it today because I, again, am wearing the new Super Goop Daily Dose, I think is what it's called. It is an SPF vitamin C serum and it's super nourishing and dewy on my skin. And I think it's going to make something like this that tends to dry out perform a lot better. So let's get the hair out of the way here. A headband hides a world of sins, doesn't it? So yeah, Rare Beauty. Again, not a release that I've been super duper excited to reach for since its initial release, but it's making my no buy a little bit harder because they did just come out with some cream blushes and I didn't love the liquid blushes. In fact, we're going to be visiting those a little bit later on, but I have high hopes for the cream blushes. I always have high hopes for cream blushes. I'm actually going to go in with this Wayne Goss 01 brush. This came in my cruelty-free eyeshadow brushes set that I ordered from Beautylish ages ago. And I completely forgot about it until I saw Jamie French. I love Jamie French, using this and she hated it. She, she was like, oh, I wanted to try out that Wayne Goss foundation brush. And she was like, ow, this is pokey. And she like switched back to her sponge. But I was like, I forgot about that brush. I'm gonna see if I like it. Cause I think that I initially put it down because it was a little bit difficult to use, but I have become more of a brush person in terms of my complexion products. And I really trust Wayne in his brush game. And so I was like, you know what? Maybe I've had a change of heart kind of on theme with this video. Yeah, the thing that I encountered with this brush is two things. One, it's tiny, and so it does end up kind of making more work for you, which I wouldn't be too upset about if it was really just like a super flawless finish that it gave me, but I feel like it also is a little on the streaky side. And that's going to depend on your foundation. Some foundations are a little bit, I don't know, more intelligent in that respect, more self-leveling, but this is, this is pretty streaky. It's having a really hard time being being even, and I think it's leaving too much on my face, and this stuff does dry down quite a bit, so I'm going to grab whatever's closest to me here, which is this Sigma Curved Kabuki, and just try and get this thinned out before it dries. Sorry, Wayne, I love everything else in that set, but that complexion brush just ain't it. I don't get it. It's kind of a foreshadowing for later in the video. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it's going to dry down. It might continue to dry down even further. And I have had my Botox refresh, so we're not gonna get as many settling into wrinkles moments on my forehead with this. But it is a pretty foundation. I just have to figure out how to wear it. I don't wanna speak too soon. We will see how everything looks at the end and that's when I'll make my decisions on everything. But I do recall this foundation looking really good right on first application and then, then it starts to betray you. So let's give it some time. All right, I'm not actually going to go in with the Rare Beauty Concealer just because this color really is too light for me and that 
is the fault of this. And I can make this work. I don't actually dislike this as much as I like the foundation. It doesn't dry out quite as much. It is a little bit more nourishing. And so I, I think I am going to keep this, but I wanted to mention it since I mentioned it with the foundation. Now, the concealer that I'm going to be using today that I honestly, guys, I really want to love this because again, it looks really nice when you apply it, but it wears horribly. And that is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I just wanted to trust this product because it's hourglass, you know, and I feel like especially with their complexion products, they're very good at making things that are creamy on the skin and that wear for a long time. And this formula just did not ever, I felt like it never agreed with a foundation that I wore it with. If you have never had that happen where they just kind of disagree, it started to happen to me because I was using so much clean beauty and clean beauty doesn't typically have a whole lot of silicones in it. And then a lot of stuff that isn't clean beauty is going to have more silicones in it. And that will make some complexion products look like they don't perform well because you will put something that's like water-based on top of something that is silicone-based or oil-based or something and basically all the particles just don't like each other and they move away from each other. This is the wrong brush. This is 100% the wrong brush and I don't care. <laughs> I can't, where is my, my little, this is what I was looking for. <laughs> My little eco tools guy, it's so tiny, it's so awesome. And it's like rounded. I feel like it's like the perfect con concealer and blending tiny areas brush. But I did continue to use this even with what I would consider to be conventional beauty and comparing the ingredients lists with other foundations to just try and get it to work and it still broke up on me. So I think it's also pretty drying. I need something that has a little bit more emollients to it. But again, again, it could just be my skincare underneath. Not that it's my fault for wearing certain skincare, but that I could make it work by wearing certain skincare underneath. And I cannot put a fine enough point on the fact that that Super Goop, the new serum, which I think it's, I don't know, it's becoming a fast favorite. It is so lovely on the skin. It makes you look like you've gotten a full night's rest. <laughs> Everything's just really dewy and beautiful when you put it on and like as you're putting it on, your skin, at least mine, I have really dry skin, especially in the winter. As I'm putting it on, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be too greasy. And then I'm like applying it, my skin's just going, thank you. Like it just feels like you're like oiling the machine. It's fantastic. So yeah, I also think that that might be a little bit too fair. That might also be the issue. I have it in the shade Birch, which is the right undertone I feel like, but it might be a little bit fair and that might be why it's showing a little bit of like grayness underneath my eyes. See, it looks really, really nice right when you put it on, but it tends to dry down in ways that I don't love. But I do want a powder. I don't know if I have a powder that really annoys me. Yeah, I'm just gonna go in with the hourglass because it's what I have sitting in front of me. I also kind of want to, I hate using the word, but I did see someone make a portmanteau called Project Pancelled. <laughs> and I do also want to try and find some dupes for this. I've heard that there is an e.l.f. illuminating powder that is very, very similar to the Hourglass powder. And they did come out with a palette that they're advertising for deep skin tones, but apparently none of the shades are new. They're just repackaged. I'm not totally sure, but people seem pretty dissatisfied with it. <laughs> I don't think that it is enough. <laughs> All right, so our next difficult product is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. And the reason that I think that this is difficult is because they call this a bronze and glow, but they call it a mini contour and highlighter palette. Which one is it, Charlotte? Is it a bronzer or is it a contour? <laughs> and I understand the concept of a brontour, but this claims to be kind of both, and I'm not sure that it really gets at either very effectively, so I'm gonna go with a fluffy brush, I guess. Also, I reached out to EcoTools because I do now have a contact at EcoTools, so this is a retired EcoTools brush. This is the... Oh gosh, I can never remember what it's called because there's a full powder brush and then there's this older powder brush that I'm not sure what it's called, but it's been, it's been retired, it's been discontinued. And now they're doing these interchangeables where the, the top pops off of them and I really, really like that. So you only have to have like a couple of handles and so they've sent me a few sets of these and I saw that there are also heads that you can buy 
for each of them that you don't have to buy the handle, which honestly, that's the point to me. You know, it's like, hey, I need a new brush, just buy a new head and it's less wasteful kind of thing. So I saw one that looks like this and I emailed my contact and I was like, is this the same? And I like sent her pictures because I've seen people review this when it came, when the new one came out and they were like, oh, is this discontinued? What's the most like it kind of thing from EcoTools? And I asked about one of the heads that they had not sent me and she's like, well, our warehouse is pretty backed up, but, and they've honestly been so good and so fast about sending me things in the past. They're going to send me the one that she said is the most similar to this and then we will compare. Those are the kinds of things that I'm waiting on before I do my tools video. I know that it's very annoying when I sit here and talk about a video that I want to make and then it just, you know, doesn't come. But that's why is because I want to have a really exhaustive review and give you guys options because, you know, I go on Amazon and I look at, uh, you know, fluffy brushes or I go on Ulta and look at like flush, fluffy powder brushes and without going and touching them, I have no idea whether they're going to be good. And I don't need more and more and more brushes, especially ones that I'm not going to use. I have so many brushes. This is such a rare thing, this kind of fluffy, loose powder brush that just dusts things on instead of like stamping them. And while I do love a nice, fluffy, luxurious feeling brush, there is something to a loose one like this. And I just haven't found anything else like this in any other collection. And EcoTools does do a good job. This is sort of their new blush version of it. And I was just hoping that the powder version is similar. And she says, it's not the same, but it's very similar. So I do want to compare those two. And I'm also just anxiously awaiting, I don't know who to email, but I'm anxiously awaiting the alert email from Beautylish that the cruelty-free Wayne Goss eyeshadow brushes that I use, the whole set is back in stock because you can buy them individually right now, but you can't buy the full set. And it's like $215 for the set. It's an amazing value. And it was just a big investment for my beauty routine. And so I don't know. <laughs> I think I might end up having to make that video and just be like, hey guys, <laughs> This will eventually be back in stock, I don't know when, because it does say it's like coming back soon, but uh, yeah, they're not in stock right now. And it just feels, it feels kind of mean <laughs> to be like, yep, these are my favorite eyeshadow brushes. Nah, 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 you can't get them, like that's messed up. So, um, okay, we have bronzed, we have not glowed yet, but uh, you know, I think that my initial confusion around the name is maybe my fault. You know, my little like semantical brain was just like, well, Charlotte, pick a lane, but I do like it. So yeah, let's use the highlighter. I think that the highlighter also is a, um, it's a typical Charlotte Tilbury highlighter situation in that it's a little bit, it's a little bit bright, but on a fluffy brush, I think it'll work. And I did just get the mini in this, but she did not put, both shades of this out in the mini, which is a little annoying. It's a lot annoying actually. Okay, real quick, this is not an annoying product. This is not a difficult product to use at all. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer and I have it in the lightest shade, which is, as it turns out, fair. And I'm going to use that as my actual bronzer. And there is a difference. There is a difference in temperature and also in depth of shade between the bronzer and the Hollywood, whatever she called this film star bronze and glow. So there is a purpose in my routine for both. And honestly, I think I could have foregone this bad boy and just done this. Okay, so far, I don't think we've done anything wrong, but I, you know, I warned you up front. I said this might end up being kind of an ugly face of makeup and it's because it's really time to address the elephant in the room. Right when I, <laughs> was about to go into labor and didn't know it four weeks early. <laughs> I ordered $200 worth of Wayne Goss blushes right when he put these out. And it was literally September 28th. And I went into labor on the 29th and I got these in the mail at some point during the blurry week and a half of just, you know, getting home after being in the hospital for five days. It, it just, it was a lot. And I have dedicated two of them to staying in my collection. It was the, the Coral Rose, I believe, and the uh, other one, the light pink and the second lighter pink. And so they are definitely staying that very, very light. I think the Coral Rose is the one that's like the easiest one for me to wear. And you guys know, I absolutely love this highlighter formula. It is an absolutely beautiful formula that really does actually blur on your skin and not highlight your imperfections or like settle into lines or anything. And I wish that he would just release the highlighters on their own because the blushes are a little bit, what, difficult. And this is an example, as I mentioned up front, of 
it being difficult because of the shades. And that's my fault because I ordered all of them. But I would argue this is a strange combination, okay? We have the Weightless Veil Blush Palette, Vivid Azalea in Shocking and Pearl. This is gonna be the most saturated one in the whole collection. And the criticism that I saw on his Instagram when he did release these was that why did you put the most pale, icy, almost holographic, like white highlighter with the most saturated blush that, you know, would most likely look best on very deep skin tones. So this is one that is, that's, it's just gonna be a challenge. And then this is actually, I mean, this is ideal, right? This is a really, really good combination for deep skin tones. It's just this gorgeous combo, but it's super saturated. And it's not so much that I need to like pass judgment on whether or not this is a good, thing in general. It's just whether it's something that belongs in my collection, whether I can make it work. And I'm honestly not sure even to the very moment that I'm mentioning this that I can. Okay. I think that the only way to really go about this is to mix it with the highlighter, but I'm not even sure that that's going to work in this case. I almost feel like I need to mix it with a powder just to lighten it up for myself. And I'm gonna do the Well People Bio Brightener just because it's very good at kind of canceling tones out. We'll see. So I'm gonna dip my, my brush in that first pretty heavily. And I'm gonna start with Bright Poppy here. And I am not going to dip into this because there's really no reason. <laughs> That's just not, you know what I mean? It's just too, it's too deep for my skin. It's not meant for me. So let me see if I can at least get this blush to work. It's just sort of stamped on and it doesn't really move around after that. And I'm honestly not sure whether that is a formula issue or a pigmentation issue. Actually, okay, so I just dipped it in the powder, dipped it in the blush, and then dipped it back in the powder, and that's giving me a little more control. And it's also combining the two textures because this is, this one's actually the only one that has a little bit of shimmer to the blush, but all the other ones are very, very matte, almost like pressed pigment matte, and so, that little bit of iridescence that's in the well people, just it's, it's a nice blurring sort of texture on the skin. Okay. I don't hate that. I am terrified right now of dipping into that azalea shade. It's so pretty, but like, yowza. I mean, honestly, that's what we came here to do today, you know? So I'm gonna do the same thing and dip twice, kind of sandwich it in between that powder and see if we can get a little, a little pop on the cheek and make this usable. all of the new people, if there are new people on this video right now, being like, why does she keep putting blush on? Stop. <laughs> Back to my channel. We're not done yet. <laughs> I, hmm. I feel like I have like a cartoon fever <laughs> right now. And there's still so much product left on my brush. Let's wipe that off a little bit. Okay, here are some initial thoughts. Regardless of whether I could desaturate that azalea enough, it's just not a shade that works on me. I think that the Bright Poppy is one that I can make work for me. And I like the shade enough that it's worth trying, but the Bright Azalea, the fact that it's called Shocking, I should have known. So what I'm going to do in order to make this work is go in with my new Finding Ferdinand palette here, and I'm going to go with that brush I just showed you guys a second ago. Really like this particular one. 
for blush when I'm confident that the shade is gonna work, you know? <laughs> if, I, if I need to be a little bit more careful, I need something a little bit fluffier, but this lavender right here will hopefully help cancel some stuff out. I don't know if that really worked. Okay, maybe not. Um, I also have the heavy artillery, the uh, Heartbeat Cheek Color in Exhale from PYT, and I have loved this for so long that the package is actually broken, and it is an even fairer version of that Finding Ferdinand one, and it is in like a very, very fair lavender. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't think that this is gonna work. <laughs> mm, like I said, this is what we came here to do today. So uh, this is all by design. I'm going to pretend that I knew what was going to happen. And I mean, I kind of did. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of the hourglass powder on a big brush here. And that's still not doing very much. <laughs> What have I done? Ah, it's just makeup khaki. All right, while I look awfully silly, let's talk about a couple more products here that are for the cheeks. In fact, I have a lot of cheek products. Just get used to looking at me like this because we're gonna be here for a minute. So, this is a product that I really want to make work. And oh boy, this stands in the comments of the Jones Road Beauty video that I made. Everybody's like, you look fine with that on. I think that that looks fine. And I'm like, well, yeah, it doesn't look like anything. I look fine without makeup on too. I look fine with just skincare on too. Like, I don't think that I need fixing. I don't think this does anything necessarily, you know, good or bad, it just doesn't really do anything. And so I was desperate to make the Miracle Balm in Dusty Rose work for me. You know, I watched all the videos about how you have to break the surface, break the seal and all this stuff. And like one girl was like, I would never use a brush with that. And I was like, okay, well I would. And I've tried a brush, I've tried my fingers, I've, I've not tried a sponge. Guys, this is just a grease bomb. I don't, I'm not, there's nothing miraculous about it and I'm decluttering it because I genuinely, like I've worn this several days since filming the initial review and since wearing it before the initial review. And while it is pretty, I do not need sticky lip balm all over my face that my hair sticks to. It's gross. I don't like it. And I'm never going to be able to get the saturation. I mean, certainly this is a little much, but the saturation that I prefer in a blush out of this product, so. And people are like, well, it's cause it's not a blush. Then fine, it's just not for me, you know? Another one that I've really actually appreciated you guys' feedback on is, is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk blush, the cheek to chic in, in Pillow Talk. It's just so funny because this is obviously not the right color of Pillow Talk and it is not labeled as the high intensity, high saturation one for deeper skin tones. And yet all of the comments confirm my suspicions. You're like, you got the wrong thing. Okay, that is not regular Pillow Talk. And I don't think it is either. I was very confused when I saw it online initially because there are two very, very different shades of this. And the fairer of them, which is the one that I thought that I was ordering, is very fair. And this is very, burgundy. I mean, it's like a very pretty bricky color, but it goes on my skin so saturated and also so glittery. So even if I could get this shade to work, the glitteriness is just too much for me. I just don't want a shimmery blush, not this shimmery. And someone said, return it. I might, you know, I might. I, I, I typically don't return things, but I might return that to Sephora because I feel like it was kind of their fault. The Rare Beauty blushes, I'd want to talk about these real quick. And these are a formula that I never really loved when I used them. Um, one is kind of a matte, one is sort of a, they call it dewy. I didn't find them to perform that differently from one another, to be honest, but the reason I'm gonna keep these around is because I want to compare them to the cream blushes when I do end my no buy and buy the cream blushes. So I am going to hold on to these for now. They're something that I would like to see if I can make work at some point because they are a cool idea. I, I don't know why, but I feel some kind of strange loyalty to making this line work. Maybe it's just because it was so overhyped, but regardless, 
I am holding on to these for the moment. And another thing that I have almost no really good reason for holding on to, but I'm going to, are the blush drops from M Cosmetics. Maybe just because, again, I like to have an encyclopedic knowledge, especially of liquid and cream cheek products. And so these are such a mainstay. I don't wanna like forget how they perform or not be able to swatch them next to things if I wanna compare them for other people. Not everybody likes to wear the amount of blush that I do, but these are really, really sticky tacky. They are the least favorite of mine from her collection, just because I like something that has a little bit of dry down. I like something that I can really pile up and these just get a little bit too sticky for me to pile up, but they are beautiful shades and I am just gonna keep them around for the sake of comparison. All right, so eyes, right? <sighs> I am actually combining a couple of ideas here. We're not going to do the full revisiting Wayne Goss beauty video until he like puts something else out that I really want. But this is why I included his in this video was just so that we could touch on the products that I wanted to readdress. So the blushes for one thing, and we can see how those are working. I feel like my eyes are getting used to it. <laughs> But I also wanted to play in this palette again today now that I've gotten my head around it a little bit better. And I want to talk about the way that I sort of hack this palette because I feel like you can be tempted to use everything in here all at once. And if I had a criticism, it would be very much like I compared it to the Charlotte Tilbury Exaggerize palette. I almost feel like it should just be these four shades. And then this should be like a deeper cool brown, but not a black. It's an okay eyeliner shade, but I'll never use the whole thing as an eyeliner shade. And I think that this one is really out of place, to be honest, because these two kind of clash against each other. It all just gets a little bit too mid-toned. You don't get enough contrast out of these shades to get a good eye look using, you know, all of them. And I would like to be able to use all of them if I wanted to, but I feel like this copper shade it's just too similar in, in like tone value and saturation value. It doesn't offer enough contrast to get like a different eye look with it. So I don't use that one really. So I am going to just be kind of dabbling in these four. The other thing that he says about this palette is that you can use the black to deepen any other shade and you can't, that's the problem. So, you know, I get it. I get the idea of using it as a mixer, but it just, it doesn't, the black takes over. And we saw that in the original video where I used this. So I'm just grabbing a fluffy brush here and I'm gonna start with the tan shade and I'm gonna use very, very little and just do almost a halo eye situation. I would not recommend using a primer with these shadows because you, at least I, want to be able to spread them out quite a bit and a primer is gonna make them stick where you put them more and not wanna move around as much. They do have great wear time. It is a lovely formula. It's just about contending with the saturation of the formula and also with the fact that this palette, I don't feel like the shades work together as well as he intended for them to, but that doesn't mean that it's like an unuseful palette and I do find it exciting. I do pull this palette out on a pretty regular basis. It's just kind of a shame because there are like in six shades, there are two that I hardly use. And it's very, very warm. So it's hard to get the depth that I like. You know, I kind of approach things from a painterly mindset and that painterly mindset always just, you know, rings in my ears. If you want something to recede from the eye, you need a cool tone to do it. And the fact that these are all so warm makes it really hard to achieve that balance. And I think that it's actually interesting sometimes that we do think of palettes as being warm or cool because it's like, oh, we wanna match them to our own undertones. Not necessarily. You want to achieve an illusion, right? That's kind of the whole point of makeup is to build some kind of illusion that improves on what you already have or why do it? Well, I mean, I guess some people just wanna look, you know, wild and that's fine too, but you wanna achieve something, you know? And the whole point of temperature and manipulating temperature is to trick the eye. And if you just use the same temperatures that are in your skin already, you're not tricking the eye at all. You need warmth to pull things forward and you need coolness to make them recede from the eye. So I do always end up pulling out another palette when I'm working with this. And I just need to find like a default contoury 
eyeshadow shade, you know, that I can always pull out. But in the meantime, I typically use my Thrive one. Like I could just depot this, quote unquote, you know, pull it out of the pan. But this shade right here is just cool enough. Okay, cool, Kaki, let's get in frame. This one's just cool enough that it works really, really well as a compliment to something that is so warm as this entire palette. And this is a mix of warm and cool. It's called warm neutrals, but there's still a cool tone in here because they get it, they get it, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's a little bit more intuitive. And something that I did say in that original video is that you really have a hard time getting away from this being a dramatic eye look palette. And I, I definitely still think that because, you know, if you are using it the way that you would dip into another eyeshadow palette, just kind of expecting the shades to build slowly, you're gonna get a little more drama than you meant to in a little bigger hurry than you thought. But I think that you can sort of stay in the shimmery shades and it doesn't get as difficult as quickly. But I am consistently having to go into another palette to try and find ways to make this palette work. And so while I think that it's a good palette and I like it and I continue using it, it isn't the mainstay palette, the staples, what do you call it, the essentials palette that you know you could travel just with this that he intended it to be in my opinion, but that doesn't make it bad. Okay, so I am going to go with the like shimmerier brown here. This might be the wrong brush. I might need to lay this down with something flat. But I was absolutely enchanted by the way that this palette helped out that look that I did with, oh, the Ilia palette that we did in my um, underrated video. I pulled this out to just kind of finish it out with the highlight and the glitter. And we're gonna, we're gonna do that again today. It was so pretty. And I think that that highlight color, that shimmery pearl, and this glitter specifically, they're the, the selling point of the palette to me. So that's the shimmery pearlescent shade, not the glitter. And I feel like, you know, when you're doing a painting, you end up with a picture, right? You're like, oh, I painted a picture of something. But what makes it look more than the sum of its parts is adding a very, milky depth to something and then adding a really beautiful, believable set of highlights to something. That's what makes the eye believe what it's looking at. And that's the same thing that goes for an eye look. And I think that it was very, very well illustrated sort of accidentally in that video because I was like, oh, this is a perfectly good eye look. And then it was like, I added the pop of highlight and it was like, oh, now my eye believes the illusion. So it went from being a pretty eye look to something that we were actually, you know, tricking the eye. So I'm just dipping back into the shimmery brown shade and doing a little blend here. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna use a little bit of that shimmery brown shade up here too. We just had a little too much contrast. We didn't end up really succeeding at a halo eye and that's fine. We're gonna go underneath the eye as well with that shimmery brown. I just think that it's the easiest to work with in the whole, the whole palette really. I've already made a pretty healthy dent in this glitter because it's just, you know what, I'm not putting it on my finger. No, I want a little bit more control than that. And you can very easily apply this with a brush. It's utterly, utterly gorgeous, this glitter. Oh my God, what a great formula. So without getting too wound up on all of my final thoughts, I just feel like the common thread in Wayne Goss's products, and I will, I'll talk about this all at the end, is just that they're like 90% there. <laughs> and I don't think that it's super subjective either. I don't think that it's like, oh, I wanted something out of this that wasn't there, and therefore I'm giving it, you know, a lower grade. It is, I, I review a lot of makeup, and it's just whether or not it's a complete thought. Okay, I'm gonna dip back into my Thrive palette here. In fact, I'm gonna actually spray my brush because every time that I've done this lately, I haven't gotten my brush wet enough and I've gotten a lot of fallout. There we go. Ooh, oh, I'm doing that from now on. That is nice. That consistency of a like truly wet brush. 
with the Thrive eyeshadow. It's a little harder to control, but it's gorgeous and it's not falling out as much. All right, that's close enough. I do wanna talk about a mascara that I will not be using today and it is the Lash Freak. I've heard some people in my comments be like, well, you should just switch the brush out because if it's such a nice formula, it's a nice formula for a regular mascara, but you guys know I'm a tubing mascara person and so I am gonna just be decluttering the Lash Freak. The brush is just too, it's just too confusing for me. It's like really overwhelming. <sighs> I just don't like when mascara kind of makes me anxious while I'm putting it on because I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin my entire eye look. I think Urban Decay, again, they just reach just beyond their grasp on this one and, uh, and it's not for me. Okay, so I have my eyeliner, my mascara, my brows on and everything, which I always feel like it just helps it helps everything feel like it's the same idea to some extent. My cheeks still look a little bit crazy. And now I'm going to see if we can pull this together with the lips. So I'm actually gonna start with the lip liner that I fell in love with the other day, the Nude Lip Liner from Fit Glow Beauty. And I will say it every time, I think that calling something nude ain't it, but that is the name of this shade. Wow, I like that color. Mm. Yes, <laughs> it's so pretty. All right, so. <laughs> difficult products, not a difficult formula at all. Just a slightly off shade for me. And I mentioned this in a previous video, my Finding Ferdinand video, which I, I didn't label as a Finding Ferdinand video, but it was my Trends I Wanna Leave in 2020 video where we tried the Finding Ferdinand customized lipsticks and things like that. And you guys might recall, I said something to the effect of, this is kind of an adjuster shade. So I made the shade Finesse and I called it Finesse because I thought it would help me finesse some shades. And it's a very, very cool toned, sheer lavender shade. And that is going to not only, you know, be a great shade to to wear with my lip liners and things like that, but I was hoping that it would make something like Victoria Beckham Pixie a shade that actually works on me instead of being slightly too peach because it's just such an unbelievably beautiful formula and it's just this much off, you know? You see what I mean? It's just like slightly too yellow. So it's got a really, really lovely, lightweight, balmy consistency. I think that this is one of the strengths of her entire collection is these lips. They don't feel like a clean beauty product. They just feel like a prestige lipstick. But that shade, again, it's just not perfectly right for me. So I'm going to blot it just a little bit so that I don't end up with like mucky lips, but the shade is still there. And we're gonna go in with my Finding Ferdinand Finesse here. and it finesses it. <laughs> it just brings it down like one little cool toned notch and it makes it work. And so that is how I conquer that particular difficult product. <laughs> this isn't the first time that I've done that. I knew it was going to work because I found it yesterday and you guys have no idea how satisfying it was to see my theory go into action and actually work because now it's ideal. It's just got a hint of lavender to it and it's perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little baby spritz here of the Aglow Face Mist. To set everything. So while my face dries, let's chat final thoughts, shall we? I wanna take a close look here and decide how this foundation has dried down. So it has kind of settled a little bit and I have this line right here <laughs> that was a waxing accident in cosmetology school. I don't wax my lip anymore for that reason. And where my, my skin actually tore and it's like a wrinkle now. So it did settle in there a little bit and on the other side, which is interesting. I didn't realize I had a wrinkle on that side too. Love that for me. I think that the Rare Beauty Foundation is gonna stay in my collection for now. I just think that it's a good landmark product to be able to compare things to. I think the shade match actually is pretty good for a winter tone for me, you know? I feel like that's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> it's easy to be deceived by how much blush I have on right now. Actually, I don't even have that much blush on, just how bright the blush is. But um, yeah, I think that I'm gonna keep this guy around as well as the concealer, not because I love them, but because I do think that I can make them work. And I, again, it's just a nice thing to be able to compare to at any given time, just having an encyclopedic knowledge, again. And also, Rare Beauty is going to continue releasing things. And when they do release things, I like to put them with 
their family of products just to make sure they're in their ideal circumstances to perform. As far as this little Charlotte Tilbury palette, I think that the first time that I used it, it was just in the wrong context because I also had the bronzer and the highlighter from her, these kind of, you know, big fat overblown guys. And so I don't necessarily think that you need both, but I am gonna hold on to this. I think it's actually really pretty and I like the formula a lot. So um, it's actually a really great little thing to travel with. She needs to release the other shade or release more shades. She did just release a bunch of shades in the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I hope that she kind of continues that and puts out like a whole menagerie of shades in her bronzers and stuff like that. And um, it would be really, really nice if we could get more shades in the mini. But I do think it's a beautiful formula and I am going to hold on to that. As far as this, the, uh, the Pillow Talk blush, I think I am going to take this back to Sephora and just be like, guys, this is obviously not regular Pillow Talk and prove me wrong. You know what I mean? I'll take it in there and compare it to whatever they have on display and be like, is this right? Because if it's not, it's mislabeled you know? And so, um, yeah, that's going to go back again. I rarely, rarely ever return things, but I just think that this is wrong. You know, I am going to hold on to the rare beauty blushes. Again, I want to be able to compare them to the cream cheeks. And if we just absolutely adore the cream cheeks and they feel like the next iteration of this, that's like an improvement on it, then, you know, we can retire these, but I still want to keep them around at least long enough to compare. Again, I don't really have a good reason to keep the M Cosmetics color drops around other than the fact that they're just really expensive and they sent these to me and they're a good thing to have as like a landmark product just in my collection. Plus we are always going to keep reviewing anything that comes out by M Cosmetics because I just love her products so much. This just happens to be kind of an anomaly that it doesn't appeal to my personal taste in wearing blush. And so it is a nice thing to keep around for comparison's sake. Plus the colors are just so beautiful. I might even use them to like mix in with something at some point. They're just nice to have around. As far as the Wayne Goss blushes are concerned. I want to reiterate what I said in the very beginning because it mainly pertained to these and that is that these are not a bad product by any means. They're not even a bad formula by any means. I just should not have bought all four. And I think that while the bright poppy is something that I can make work in my collection even if this is you know an eyeshadow for me <laughs> at some point. I think that you know kind of dipping my brush and stuff like that that's not something that's such a toiling effort that it is obnoxious just like too obnoxious, prohibitively obnoxious for me to do in order to achieve a really nice color. But I firmly believe that this was never meant for me and I should not have bought it. <laughs> so I am going to uh, retire this, pass this on to a friend of mine who would appreciate it more. And I will use the Wayne Goss eyeshadow palette here to unload all of my thoughts on the Wayne Goss releases. First of all, this is an imperfect palette. It absolutely is for all the reasons that I've already enumerated earlier in the video. However, it has such redeeming qualities that I want to keep it around. This glitter, I don't know if I can live without it. It's just so pretty. It's so understated. It is a very, very good alternative to like the hourglass scattered light, for example. It's what I think that the Charlotte Tilbury one is going for in her exaggerized palette, but this is just easier to control. It's a prettier shade of kind of rich, creamy beige. and. It really, it just sets off any look. The combination of these two are just something that I would lean on to finish out any look. While I'm probably never going to use the black in this palette and it doesn't really go with the other shades the way that he expected it to in the sense that it would mix and, and increase the depth in any of the shades. In, instead, we're kind of stuck with a fully mid-tone palette for the most part. And that's why like these two shades don't really serve much of a purpose to me, but these four are totally worth it to me. Or worth it in the sense that I already own it and I don't want to get rid of it. Not necessarily worth it in the sense that I think you should run out and buy it. Now, Wayne Goss's releases, <laughs> I feel like can all be exemplified by this one little brush. And that is that, you know, this is a set of probably eight brushes or something. And one of them happens to be the biggest one is just like not useful. Maybe it's a personal opinion thing, but I mean, watching Jamie French, someone who does her makeup completely differently than I do watch her use this and she was like, nah, I just, it doesn't work for me. It kind of validated my sense of, is it necessarily my preference of putting on makeup or are some of these products just kind of not really like run through the final, final round of testing. I just feel like there should be more consideration in his releases for the fact that most of the people who are fans of his are not makeup artists, not influencers. While he takes into consideration skin tones and skin age and skin type, I'm not sure he takes into consideration skill level. And while they are beautiful and they perform very beautifully on the people that he shows in his videos who are making the most of those products, that doesn't really apply to a lot of us. You see me kind of 
struggle to make them work in a way that's wearable, daytime, easy, fun for me, instead of just kind of approaching with caution. However, I will say his lip glosses knock it out of the park. And I've seen some not that great reviews for those too, because they're kind of a little too milky for some people that have like, you know, more pigmented lips or what have you. They tend to work really, really well on me. I also really think his color stories are beautiful in the lips, both in the lip liner and in the lip uh, glosses. Daisy, the lipstick, I didn't absolutely love that formula, but I also kind of want to retry that shade with my new finesse shade because again, it was a nude that was just slightly too yellowy peach for me. So we will maybe do that in another video. So that's my spiel on the Wayne Goss releases. As far as the other things, I'm super pumped that I was able to get this to work exactly how I wanted it to, the Victoria Beckham Pixie shade. So this makes it much more wearable for me. So I am going to also be decluttering the Lash Freak mascara. Editing khaki here. Um, also, I'm decluttering the Hourglass concealer and the Jones Road Beauty Miracle Bomb. I just had too many things on my desk and couldn't keep them straight, but those are going in the declutter pile too. And I think that that's it. Is that it? I think that that's it for this video. So out of everything, I'm decluttering three things. I think that that's pretty good. Again, I like to keep a big collection because I like to be able to swatch things against each other, but I don't think that these things are ever going to be something that I need to compare to something else. We will remember. They're not going to be useful in my collection, you know? So yeah, guys, that is my little baby creative take on a mini declutter. And let me know if you guys enjoyed this format of a video. I think it's kind of a healthy thing for me to do every once in a while because I do open in my drawers all the time and I'm like why don't why don't I use this why don't I use this or like why do I keep forgetting about this or why am I avoiding this product and a lot of times I just need to come toe to toe with it and address the issue and possibly declutter it so yeah I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel guys hit the button down below and subscribe I would love it if you did thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one bye